Oh God, this is commencement day. It's a day that is full of memory, many memories of high school days in the past. It's a day engulfed by Thanksgiving, a day of challenge, a day of anticipation for what the future holds. And so, dear Lord, the class of 1986 from Kenston High School stands here today before us, and we've come here in the spirit of thanksgiving, in a spirit of prayer, of joy, and of honor. In the spirit of thanksgiving for the Kenston school system, for the members of the Board of Education, for the administrators, and for the educators, for all the dedicated persons who have helped to shape and mold the lives and the minds of our daughters and sons. And in the spirit of prayer, we gather too for the members of the class of 1986 that the eternal God of life might guide their footsteps and instill in them a fondness for that which is good and that which is honorable. And in the spirit of joy, a sense of accomplishment today, a sense of excitement at new beginnings, a sense of joy as we come to congratulate. And finally, our God, we come in the spirit of honor for a job well done, for those personal academic achievements gained, for honors won, and athletic victories attained. We ask your blessing upon this very special time in all of our lives. Amen. and fellow graduates. Today is a very important day in the lives of the members of the class of 1986. Our high school years have come to an end. The past four years have left us with many memories which will never be forgotten. High school has given us the opportunity to discover ourselves, to learn our strengths and, weak strengths and weaknesses, to find our interests, to determine our values, and to learn the art of decision making. Now we must go into the world and use that knowledge to become productive members of society. According to Carl Sagan, the enterprise of knowledge is essential for the welfare of the human species. I have no doubt that the class of 86 will be successful. We have already shown promise through our accomplishments in athletics as well as academics. I believe that a poem by Edgar Guest is applicable to our class. Somebody said that it couldn't be done, but with a chuckle he replied that maybe it couldn't, but he would be one who wouldn't say so till he'd tried. So he buckled right in with the trace of a grin on his face. If he worried, he hid it. He started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done, and he did it. It is this never give up attitude that has made and will make the class of 86 a success. Today is a new beginning. From here, we go on to colleges, universities, trade schools, the armed forces, and the job market itself. We are the future doctors, lawyers, writers, scientists, businessmen, engineers, skilled laborers, accountants, and mathematicians. Faced with seemingly impossible tasks, our class will not back down. The class of 86 has character that will carry it through whatever lies ahead. They say that adversity builds character, and that is especially true in this case. 
Adversity has also made us into one of the most closely knit classes to graduate from Kenston. We have grown together and shared good times as well as bad times. I am sure that these friendships will not end with graduation today. The class of 86 is composed of people with a bright future. I'm proud to be a part of it. I'm confident that we will make a name for ourselves in the coming years. In my opinion, with the class of 1986, the future lies in good hands. has come to a close, let us not forget what we have experienced. From freshman to senior, we have learned to take on new responsibilities and strive for higher goals. No matter whether it has been academics, athletics, music, community service, or other extracurricular activities, this class has definitely exhibited diversity and excelled in these areas. The intellectual growth that we acquire is based on knowledge and experiences accumulated over the years. We will look back at the good times of high school, but high school is now over and we must face a new beginning. We are each headed in different directions, whether it is college, a technical school, the service, or entering the workforce. High school has been a stepping stone to the real world, just one more step than we have climbed in our development. We must now be ready to face a change and make new choices. The choices concerning each one of your futures are many but we will learn to take on new responsibilities and deal with greater obstacles. When you want to accomplish something, I encourage you all to take the initiative and carry out the task to the best of your ability, demonstrating purpose and determination. Although, although we will be challenged and discouraged, stimulated and often rejected, we all must learn to stand up for our beliefs and values in order to further our growth. Most of all, I wish for all of you the strength and courage to believe in yourself and pursue your aspirations. I would like to share with you a poem that I recently received. The poem is entitled, Believe in Yourself. If you'll remember always, there's no goal you can't achieve. If you'll try your very hardest and above all else, believe. Believe that you're a person who has something good to give. Believe that you can make this world a better place to live. If you'll believe your talents and skills are needed too, then you're sure to find there's nothing in the world you cannot do. Congratulations and best wishes to the class of 1986. students. This day is momentous not only because we are finally graduating, but also because this is the last time that the class of 1986 will be assembled in one place. Over the next few months, each of us will take a separate path leading either to college or directly into the labor force. This is sad in a way, but it's also exciting. We will have a chance to explore new places and meet people from varied backgrounds. Our years at Kenston have well prepared us for these new experiences. Kenston has provided us with a strong educational base and the ability to become successful in whatever endeavor we choose. I'm sure that in the future, each of you will look back and reflect on your years here at Kenston. You'll remember all the good times, the victories, the parties, and especially the people. You'll never forget your good friends, your teammates, and the teacher who went out of his or her way to help you grow and expand your horizons. These are the things you will always remember. Good luck, everybody.
Mr. Timmons, members of the Board of Education, Reverend Duras, faculty, class of 1986, parents, friends, and guests. Today, class of 86, you're experiencing a happy, positive beginning into the future. These high expectations are good. I want you to enjoy life's highs. Think, think a lot of life's highs. Too many people dwell on the lows. I do not want you to consider the thoughts of disappointment or think of the pain of disappointment. Nobody can protect you from disappointment or success. But remember, all the doors are open to you. If any of us calculated perfectly the risks of life, the likeliness of losses, many of us would refuse to be leaders. We want you to try to always achieve. Ellen Goodman says, dull lives are based on the careful calculation of past performances, but lives of promise and progress can come from the irrational conviction that you can beat the odds and make the future different. I think the class of 1986 from the speeches I've heard today are going to make the future different. We've all heard that history repeats itself. However, you have the educational fuel to deny the negatives and to forge ahead and to be successful. Don't settle for too little. When you can taste victory, please don't compromise. I personally prefer great expectations despite all the risks of great disappointment. I'd like to thank the class of 1986 for the Merit National Finalists, for the commended students, for all of your volunteer service to the school and the community, for returning for the second year the Chagrin Valley Boys Athletic Trophy to Kenston. I'd like to thank you for working for the successful passage of the Kenston bond issue. And I'd also like to thank the parents and friends and guests in the community who worked for that passage. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 1986, out of this class, conservative, conservatively, 65% of these students are going on to college. 7.5% are going to a two-year college or technical school. 15% are going into the workforce. 2.5% are going into the military. 10% at this time are undecided, but I know they will make good choices. Dr. Calgar, the class of 1986 has completed two units of mathematics, two units of science, one unit of health, physical education, four units of English, three and a half units of social studies. They've completed a minimum of 18 units of credit toward graduation. They have met the requirements of the Kenston Board of Education the state of Ohio, and the North Central Society of Schools. Dr. Calgar, I'm very proud to present to you the class of 1986. Thank you, Mr. Chum. It does give me great pleasure to recommend to the Kenston Board of Education that it accept the graduating class of 1986. These graduates have met or exceeded the standards set by the Board of Education and mandated by the state of Ohio. Other than getting your driver's license, this is one of the, probably one of the most important days of your life. <laughs> it represents responsibility, adulthood, and independence. We hope that you are ready for your new roles, and we hope that 
we are ready for you. Many of you, as indicated here this afternoon, have excelled in the academics, vocational education, art, music. We're highly impressed with the fact that over 130 of you students received awards and or scholarships last Tuesday night. The school is certainly a very active place for over two thirds of you have participated in co-curricular activities. We always hear about the underdog, but today I want to compliment the upper dog. You are the upper dogs for your achievement. You set good goals, you're working hard to attain them, you're willing to attack new problems, you're looking at these problems as, as opportunities. You're willing to carry your load. You're willing to get out and do the work. Regardless of your status, your opulence, or native endowment, you're willing to do and to achieve. I'm interested in more in your I do than your IQ, and you've shown us that you can do it. The body of every organization is structured in four different kinds of bones. There are the wish bones who wish, I should say, spend all their lives wishing somebody would do the work for them. Then there are the jaw bones who do all the talking and that's, that's about it. The knuckle bones knock about anything anybody tries to do. Then there are the back bones, you folks, who have gotten out and done the work. There are many good news and bad news stories or jokes. I wish to tell you about one, about a fictitious rookie airline pilot. He says over the public address system, Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. I wish to inform you that we have good news and bad news. The good news, or I should say the bad news is we're lost. The good news is we're making extra special time. Applied to our civilization, ladies and gentlemen, we are running a course that we've got to apprise very carefully. We have a lot of inexperienced leaders. We've lost our direction. We're not traveling toward an intended destiny of mankind's incredible potential. Leadership can come from many different directions. Cream is not the only thing that rises to the top. What I'm saying is that each and every one of us has to watch very carefully how our government responds to our wishes and wills and who's directing the ship. Do you realize that approximately 25% of our people select the President of the United States? What I'm saying to you is I hope you become knowledgeable, hardworking citizens to improve and maintain our strong republic. Many people don't recognize the fact that you students are moving out of the, one of the most difficult periods of your life. Growing up is tough. Today, this is the end of one journey and the beginning of another. William Phelps once wrote, and I repeat him constantly, to say that youth is happier than maturity is like saying that the view from the bottom of the tower is better than the view from the top. As we ascend, the range of our views widens. The horizon is pushed farther away. Finally, as we reach the summit, it is as if we have the world at our feet. I am sure that you have many goals in mind for the future, but because of a multitude of reasons, you may have to modify those goals, eliminate the goals, rewrite goals. In the next decade or so, two out of 10 jobs will require a baccalaureate degree. With progress comes problems. Your vocations might have to change because of economical reasons, technological changes or discoveries, politics, social changes. However, a good education will help you adjust to a new situation. Today is a very difficult one for your parents, and I hope you will thank them for what they've done for you, as they've done the best in their own way. Now, before you thank them, ask them to sit down and say, Mom and Dad, we thank you. We don't want them to faint and get themselves hurt. Surprise and the compliment. The second most important person or persons in your life are your teachers, the very foundation of your educational process or program. You will recognize their importance of the responsibility assigned to them as time passes on. Wes Smith, writer for the Chicago Tribune, writes, congratulations, graduates, welcome to the real world, you poor lost souls. I disagree with him, by the way. In the real world, they are not kidding when they say, wash whites separately. Cars need, uh, not only need gasoline, but oil, antifreeze, brakes, and transmission fluid, and about a third of your annual income. Never answer an advertisement seeking a liberal roommate, you 
probably are not that liberal. Nobody cares anymore that you drank uh, six packs. I'm sorry, nobody cares anymore that you uh, drank a six pack and got sick. Grocery coupons are not socially unacceptable. If you don't like your job, quit. Otherwise, shut up, Mr. Smith says. Be nice to the little people. You are still one of them. You are going to need silverware. Single bars get more out of you than you get out of them. At some point in your life, your family will be all you have. Treat them right. Five years after graduating from high school, everyone becomes a varsity letterman. <laughs> Go be an achiever, be an upper dog, be a backbone, be a leader or a good follower. I'd like to close with this prayer. Dear God, help me to be a good sport in this game of life. I don't ask for an easy place in the lineup. Put me anywhere you need me. I only ask that I can give you 100% of everything I have. If all the hard drives seem to come my way, I thank you for the compliment. Help me remember that you never send a player more trouble than he can handle. And help me, Lord, to accept the bad breaks as part of the game. May I always play on the square, no matter what the others do. Help me study the book so that I know the rules. Finally, God, if the natural turn of events goes against me and I bench for sickness or old age, help me to accept that as part of the game, too. Keep me from whimpering that I was framed or that I got a raw deal. And when I finish the final inning, I ask for one, for, I'm sorry, for no laurels. All I want is to believe in my heart that I played as well as I could and that I didn't let you down. Good luck. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cogger and Mr. Shum, faculty and parents, and graduating class of 1986. It gives me great pleasure on behalf of the Kenston Board of Education to accept this graduating class of 1986. They have shown that they can meet the challenges life offers them and use it to benefit themselves and others. Our best wishes go with them upon this graduating day. We thank you. Now we're ready to give you your diplomas.
Christian and Petrell. Stacy Elizabeth Craig.
Chairman R. Kilroy.
Frank Anthony Mazzullo.
Richard Albert Rebius.
Jennifer Ann Stewart.
William. upon the graduates of Kenston High School in the class of 1986. May their lives be blessed and adorned with the spirit of hopefulness and excitement. Might they clearly see the bright horizons that are before them. What might be is theirs to visualize and to attain. God bless them, one and all. Amen.